time to talk about the mole. And we will be using the mole a lot. This is our first introduction to it. And the mole, um, I think it's our first introduction to it. Well, the mole, we've talked about molar mass though, is, and the mole has an abbreviation MOL, is 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd. It is a number that is called Avogadro's number. And it is just like a dozen is 12. A mole is a much bigger number. And that's because atoms are tiny. A dozen eggs, that's convenient. A mole of atoms or molecules or particles or ions is also convenient. And the periodic table has the average molar mass of each element as the number under the chemical symbol, as we've discussed. We can make this into a number of conversion factors. And let's do it for gold. Again, I have my periodic table right here. Gold is AU. The number under AU is 197.0. That means there are 197.0 grams per mole of gold. That's what the periodic table tells us. We're turning this into conversion factors and uh, we can do this 197.0 grams of gold is, equal, is per one mole of gold. That's one of our conversion factors. And that's just basically stacking up the molar mass part. What it says is that one mole of gold is equal to 197.0 grams. And I think this is uh, new. Uh, is he also equal to 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd? Uh, atoms of gold. And Avogadro's number can be used for atoms, moles, or sorry, <laughs> not moles, um, uh, uh, molecules, uh, ions. It can even be used for pennies. You can have a mole of pennies and you would be unbelievably rich, although they're very heavy, uh, a mole of pennies. So uh, I have to stop here for a second to see, okay, if it's an atom, I know that because it's just one here. That's how I know. Okay, so this is the heart of what so much of what we're going to be doing for the rest of the semester. And we can turn this into a number of unit conversion factors. We've already seen one, but we can put any combination of these. So I'm gonna start by doing 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd uh, atoms of gold over one mole of gold. Uh, we could flip these, again, they're equal to each other. So you can put either one on the top and the other one on the bottom, whatever helps you to cancel your units. Uh, let's see, there's also um, 197 hmm, grams of gold, 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd atoms of gold. And again, so these are the three unit conversion factors that we, we can make uh, based on gold's box on the periodic table. And then each of these, you can take the reciprocal. They can be flipped, can be flipped. Depending upon what units you want to get to cancel out. And we're going to find out exactly how we want to cancel the units starting on the next page. So, <laughs> So if, uh, uh, we can do a number of chemistry problems using these conversion factors. Uh, how many moles are there in 36.8 grams of carbon? Well, okay. So we always need a process for solving problems. The number that's in the problem with its units is gonna be our starting point for this problem. So I'm just gonna write it. That's gonna call it my given. And 
I have to say the of here, I've said that of mathematically means times. Uh, it doesn't in this case. And so it's really just in 36.8 grams carbon, the of could be a little confusing, sorry about that. But that's, I'm gonna write it just as 36.8 grams carbon. And then I know I'm gonna do a unit conversion. And my unit conversion I need is from grams to moles. And grams to moles is going to be the molar mass. And the molar mass is on my periodic table. And we've talked about for carbon at least um, where that number came from. It is 12.01 grams per mole carbon, which is 12.01 grams carbon per one mole of carbon. And I guess I could call this expanding the molar mass into the unit conversion factor. Um, and please do all of these steps if you need them, and especially at the beginning. We will do molar mass unit conversions 50 to 100 plus times this semester. So I think you will get comfortable doing them in your head, but if not, always write it out. I, so whenever I have any trouble, if I, can, I, I always go back to writing everything out, right? Plus I can see it later. <laughs> that has saved me a number of times too. Um, so always, and, and if you get to the exam and you feel comfortable, then you should have enough time on the exam to do all of the steps just like this but maybe you can do them faster if you practice. Uh, and, sorry, <laughs> I know we're almost done with the, this lecture outline here, but so, so much of chemistry is practice. That's why you have so much homework. And I'm sorry, but all of these problems are made by me and they're meant to reinforce exactly what I'm trying to teach you. All right, back to the problem. Uh, okay, I have grams on top. So I'm gonna use this unit conversion factor. I know I want grams of carbon on the bottom, and that means I have to flip this and put the 12.01 grams of carbon on the bottom and the one mole of carbon on top. And yes, I'm guided by the problem. I want moles for this. And if I cancel my units, I, I have moles left as the answer. So now that all that's over is, um, except for the math. So it's gonna be 36.8 divided by 12.01, and I get three uh, to three sig figs, always fine, 3.06 moles carbon. And you have to put the units for anything that you write for me. Um, of course, if you put it into the learning management system and it, it only accepts numbers for the NUM ones, so you can't put in the units. It's a little heartbreaking to me, but that's our first one. Excellent. Um, now our next one, how many grams are there in 4.16 moles of sodium? So we're given, and I'm just gonna write G this time, is gonna be 4.16 mole. And you can write out sodium if you've memorized that sodium is Na, then that's fine to write too. The molar mass for sodium is going to be 22.99 grams per mole. And that expands just like the carbon into 22.99 grams of sodium per one mole of sodium. And this time we've already got our moles on the bottom. And we can put our grams on the top. And it's all over but the math. 4.16 times 22.99, 95.6 three sig figs. Grams of sodium. And so I oftentimes have problems with calculators. So let's see, 36 divided by 12 
should be about three, so that looks good. Four times 20, four times 20 would be 80. Both of these numbers are a little bigger than that, so uh, that's fine. And sorry, I should make my decimal points a little bigger so you can make sure you can see them on this video. What I want you to do is I want you to do problem number three on your lecture notes so that I can grade it later as part of your lecture notes. Now, uh, we've done atoms. Now, the next logical step is to move on to uh, uh, molecules, compounds, if you will. And um, how to calculate the molar mass of a compound? Add up the molar masses of the elements in the compound. That's why we've been doing these how many atoms are in each formula um, from previous parts. So there are two oxygens here. So uh, if I were to show my process, it might be two times oxygen equals two times. Go to the periodic table, look at the number under it, 16.00. Come back here, Paige. Um, equals thirty-two, and all of our molar mass. So all of our molar masses. I'm just gonna say, it, have four sig figs. Please use four sig figs. So molar mass. All molar masses have four sig figs. And the reason that all molar masses have four sig figs is because all the numbers in the problems have three sig figs. And you always want to be more accurate and precise on your molar mass than the numbers in the rest of the problem. So all molar masses have four sig figs. Even if it's 32.00. So uh, if you were to just write 32 for this, I would cringe a little bit, but it wouldn't change the math and you'd be okay. Um, yeah, I mean, honestly, but it's good practice. Let's say that. When you get to general chemistry, you will have to write down 32.00, not just 32. And that's gonna be grams per mole O2. Here we have two sodiums, and I'm going to try and stack them up here. Two times sodium, one times sulfur, four times oxygen. It's going to be two times, and I got my periodic table over here. Hopefully, you have yours as well. 22.99, one times 32.07, four times just 16, multiply them out, add them up. <laughs> I feel a little shaky with my calculator now. So two times 22.99 plus, oh, I think I'm gonna do the rest of my head, plus 32.07 plus, and four times 16 happens to be 64. I get 142. 0.05. Technically, it should have two decimal places, but as long as it's 142.0 or 142.05, I will take either of those as a great molar mass, a correct molar mass, I don't know how great it is actually, for sodium sulfates. Last but not least, we want to do on this page uh, ammonium sulfate. And for ammonium sulfate, there's going to be two nitrogens, two for everything that's in parentheses. So that's two times four, that's eight hydrogens, one sulfur, four oxygens, and set this up. And again, show your work as long as you need to. You can do molar masses in your head. You don't have to write down the whole process for it. I'm okay with that. So again, we're gonna do molar masses 50 to 100, maybe even 150 times. So, but 
I'm going to do it out uh, this last time at least. 2 times 14.01. 8 times 1.008, 1 times 32.07, 4 times 16.00. Uh, this is going to be 28.02. This one I never know. 8 times 1.008. I get 8.064, 32.07, 16.00. Twenty-eight point oh two plus eight point oh six four plus let me see that good thirty-two point oh seven plus sixty-four. I get one thirty-two point one five four. We shouldn't go to any more than two decimal places. Grams per mole. One thirty-two point two would also be fine, and then you should write the formula because. Grams per mole is part of your units. What it is the grams per mole of is the other part of your units. So now our units that I love so much have two parts to them. Uh, neither of which you can put in the learning management system. All right, so we can find moles or grams of compounds. Now we've got 27.7 grams of oxygen given. Um, I think it's the English in me, grams of oxygen. If I just wrote grams oxygen, it's fine for the math part. Anyway, sorry I keep doing that. Um, this is one time when of doesn't mean multiply. I mean, I, yeah. All right, and then from the last one, this time it's 32.00 grams of oxygen per one mole of oxygen. Remember, we just had that on our last slide. And grams of oxygen cancel. It leaves us with our units of moles of oxygen. And it's all over but the math. Zero point eight six six rounded to three sig figs. Moles O2. Uh, I'll do one more, and then you're going to do one more in your lecture notes, uh, and I will be checking it. But let's do the second one. 1 1.26 times 10 to the minus 3. Moles. Sodium sulfate. From the last slide, I have... Uh, I mean, uh, so I always use two decimal places. I know it's it's horrible because it's got five sig figs, but um, please bear with me. Uh, 142.05. Ah, I want moles on the bottom, so my moles cancel. So I'm going to have 142.05 grams Na2SO4 for one mole Na2SO4. Again, if you use 142 point, oh my goodness, that should round up to 142.1. If you're going to use four sig figs, you should do your rounding correctly. Um, I'm now a member of the American Association of Retired Persons now that I'm 50. And so I'm only going to get more curmudgeonly as I age. Thanks for bearing with me. All right, so now, as I just said previously for the last problem, it's all over except the math. And 1.26 exponent 3 minus times 142.05. I get 0 0.1789. That's going to round to 0 0.179. Uh, moles, no, grams. <laughs> All right, that's why I double check things. This is a small number. This is a big number. So about 0 0.001 times 100. Okay, that seems about right. Na2SO4. 
I'm used to that number being a number of moles, but in this particular problem, it's a number of grams. Any more pages? That's it for this lecture outline. Good work, everybody.